We went on many excursions to try to find other survivors. Every week, we drove in one direction as far as we could. We honked our horn along the way. Most of the time, we found no one. After a few years, many cities were taken over by aggressive dogs and I had to carry a handgun for protection. In 30 years, we found over 50 people. Most were young women who ended up coming with us back home. Most of them wanted to have children and they asked me if I would father their child. How could I refuse? Anne agreed to be present and to help. The internet worked a few years longer before we were cut off. We lived the life raising children and looking for survivors. Many survivors that we found decided to come back to our farm and settle nearby. I fathered many children and we formed a very nice community. When our first son turned 10, I gave him a broken car with a garage filled with manuals and tools. I told him that if he wanted to drive, he would have to learn how to fix the car. By the time he was 13 years old, he was able to get the motor working. We had years of anything and everything we ever wanted and much more than what we really needed. We documented all of the people we ever found, listing their location, their needs, and their skills. After the communication services started to fail, lacking necessary maintenance, pigeons started to be used. We found Prisca who raised pigeons. We revisited all of the people we had found and gave them all pigeons. Prisca offered to ask to act as a communication switchboard relaying messages with her pigeons. Most of the messages were good news like a birth or the finding of a survivor. We continued our weekly excursions looking for survivors. We went further up into the mountains and one day we found a settlement of 32 children ranging from nearly born to young men with sprouting beards and young expecting women. They were all naked. When the children first saw me, they all ran to me and surrounded me and hugged me. They ran to get Adam. When Adam appeared, he ran up to me and grabbed me and gave me a hug and kissed and called me dad. He cried when I told him that I was not his dad. He told me, sobbing, that his dad went away one day many years ago to look for other survivors and he never returned. He had an interesting story to tell. After my mom died, my father told me of how he had found her with my sister, Ava, and me. I was only one year old. They had two more children and then the triplets before she died. My father described a very strange world with the streets filled with cars and people and family in every house. But the only people I ever saw and knew were my two parents and my younger brothers and sisters. Then, one day, my father drove away for a day to find survivors and never came back. We are still waiting for him to return. He taught us many things. My father told my sister, Ava, that she must one day take over the role of our mother. And he told me that I must take over his role when he gets old and dies. My father taught me that his role was to love his wife and have children with her, to provide shelter and nurture her and their children with food. He told me that the role of a wife was to have children with her husband, to be tender and nurture him and their children with love. When my father died, I was seven years old. I told Eva that I would take over my father's role and she told me that she would take over my mother's. We moved into our parents' bedroom. For the next seven years, we raised our younger brothers and sisters like we were raised by our parents. 
The triplets were only two years old when Dad died. We followed the same rules and celebrated the same celebrations that our parents did with us. Then, one day, Ava grew a fat stomach like I remembered my mom did before she died, giving birth to the triplets. It grew bigger and rounder until she gave birth to a baby girl. The next year, my other sisters also gave birth. Within four years, we had 16 new children and we taught them everything that our parents taught us, to read and write, to count and sing, and to play music and dance. The community of children were thriving as a farming community. They had a school and a clinic. They had two soccer teams, a playing field, a community hall, and a choir. They never went further than the next city where they found solar panels, books, movies, and computer games. Just before I died, two very fat armed Chinese men flew into our commune in what appeared to be one-man helicopters. They landed nearby, and when they saw we were not armed, they put away their weapons. They looked like spacemen with laser guns. They gave us a leaflet in 36 languages, scanned us with machines, and flew off as fast as they landed. The leaflet read, We come to save you. You are no longer alone. We are from China and found you by infrared technology. We are here to help you. In a few weeks, your power system will be restored and your internet connection will be available. Please use it to receive further instructions at www.china.cn. Prisca's pigeons were busy that week. People didn't know whether to be happy or sad. A few days later, on a cloudy night, the entire sky turned bright and began to show a movie. It was like the entire sky was a TV of exceptionally high definition. And then the sound began very gently, like a soft wind forming into a crescendo of drums. The vision was that of man surrounded by angels. The speech was in German. You are saved. You are not alone. I suddenly sensed a sinking heaviness in my heart and a lifting lightness in my head as I felt my soul being torn from my body. Then I died.